All right, guys, welcome back to PacWest Bigfoot. Today I'm going to have Rachel on here and her experience. Uh, real quick, just to let you know, I have a winner waiting for them to get back to me for the uh, T-shirt and the cards uh, from Robin Hyatt. As a matter of fact, just to let you know, I have this next month um, for the giveaway in September. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it is so cool. Bigfoot and a bear on a mug right here. And this is from Sarah Bergman, guys. I've also got a print, a print that I'm going to go ahead and send you guys out as well of some of her artwork. Uh, this, this, this print right here uh, as well. So that's going to be next uh, for next month's um, giveaway here on PacWest Bigfoot. So what I want to do now is let's just get on in here. And uh, Rachel, you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Hey, all right. And uh, where where are you from, Rachel? We don't mind. mind I'm saying. actually from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Okay. All right. And where your encounter happened? Where? Um, Sandylands uh, Provincial Forest. Okay. All right. So that's, why don't you? Um, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, and just... that's just about sixty-four miles um, south or uh, south east of Manitoba of Winnipeg. Okay. Okay. All right. Yep. So go ahead and uh, just, you know, let us know, uh, you know, what kind of, you know, what you were doing that led up to this, where you were at, what you um, experienced and don't hold back from us. Okay, sure. I'll tell you. Um, so anyway, uh, me and my family, we always went out there every um, summer to go blueberry picking and mushroom picking. I believe this was in late July, early August. Uh, sort of like this time of year so um, it probably was blueberry season and um, we had spent the day out there in um, in the forest um, picking blueberries and um, it was a um, bit of a stormy weather day it wasn't the nicest weather out but uh, we we did go out and got a few uh, bushels of berries and um, we were driving back and it's a very sandy road uh, through the park and uh, we came up to this one area where there's uh, very close bushes growing up on the sides of the road that they're actually brushing up against the uh, the sides of the, the Volkswagen camper van that we were in. Mm -hmm. And um, there, was, uh, there was a tree pushed down across the road or knocked down. Um, it was uh, one of those poplar trees that goes pretty straight up and has sort of like the, the V-shaped branches that go sort of like in a V straight up and down and I I was elected to go out and uh, to move this uh, branch to move this tree out of the way and I um, got out of the camper and I um, had to get right next to all these um, the bushes that were right against the, the camper there and uh, they're actually Saskatoon berries which were ripen in season at that time too and when I had just started to move this uh, tree out of the way I noticed that the, the tree was actually a green tree it was a living tree that was splintered and the, the bark was still attached to the to the base of the tree and when I started moving it I heard um, I heard a, a hooting to the to my left which was on the it was on the driver's side, uh, the bushes, but I heard a, sort of a hooting sound to the left, which did not sound like an owl to me. It was sort of like something was trying to sound like an owl. Mm. And so I was like really kind of suspicious at that point. I was thinking, well, what, you know, what's that? And so I start moving it, keep moving it. And a few seconds later, further down towards the back of the van, I heard a whistle. And I was thinking that it was, you know, like I'd never heard bird song like that before in this in this forest. Uh, the only birds I'd ever heard were um, blue jays and crows or ravens, and I think maybe once a killdeer as well. But uh, this whistle, it was almost like a bird call, but it sounded like it didn't come from a didn't come from a bird. And I, um, so I pulled the, the branches out of the way, or the tree out of the way, and we got back in the car, and we did, we left the area, and um, 
I never mentioned to my uh, parents, you know, when we got back in that this had happened, but um, um, that's basically what happened to me that day. It was just, um, just a little odd. I'd never experienced anything like that since, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, that happening was just a bit strange, and I just thought I would mention that to you. Yeah, no, no. Um, you know, that is... Uh... Yeah, that would be uh, kind of uh, weird, you know, to hear, you know, anything like that. Um, that's pretty, as the, the whooping and the whistling. I mean, whistling in a forest, I mean, you don't really get a lot of that. I just put up a video today uh, of somebody who kept capturing whistles back to them when they were out doing some Bigfooting, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and uh, it was it was pretty crisp and clear whistles coming back so i don't know if they were you know were they pretty crisp clear whistles you know kind of you know yes um, that's what i heard um like the hooting and then the whistle was like um just um sounds like um pursed lips whistling um i thought you know for a second i thought it might have been a bird but then Mm-hmm. No, I was just for a second, there, and then I was thinking, <laughs> okay, we're ambushed here in the middle of nowhere. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Nah. We got out of there fine. Oh, wow. Jeez. So. Um, um, mm-hmm. Go ahead. There's uh, this one other thing that I remembered. Um, somewhere around that area, I um, I had I'd taken a picture of it. Somebody had put up a a sign. Um, Welcome to some town. I can't remember exactly what it might have been, but they actually drew a picture of a Bigfoot on the sign out <clears> there. <throat> and if I can, <laughs> if I ever hunt down that picture, you know, I might have it somewhere. I might, you know, yeah. send, it, send it to you, email it to you. Oh, that'd be great. Just, you know, you have something cool. That would be awesome. Um, thank you. Thank you. That would be great. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of squatches, I got my little three-year-old in the uh, background. If you can hear him, sometimes he's uh, <laughs> he's rather loud in yeah. the mornings. Yeah. But yeah. Um, there's just one other thing that I could mention. You know, um, it might not be a big deal or anything, but um, the place where I live has a park next to it, mm-hmm. like across the street. You know, like a, a pretty one of the biggest parks in our city. And across the road there, like across the park, there's something called the Assiniboine Forest. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's not a very big forest, but it's, it's technically a forest. And I've been watching videos about structures, right? Mm-hmm. And um, so I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. And so I've been um, walking through the park and actually right next to this... Um, I'm not sure if these are, I don't think that these might be Bigfoot structures, these first ones I might mention. But in this park, there's like, um, there's an ornamental garden. And just before you get there on this footpath, there are like, you could call them wigwams or teepees that somebody has been building for at least a year or two out there that they've been adding to. Mm -hmm. And they're all twigs and trees and everything. And it would be easy enough to find out who did them, I guess, if you ask the, um, the, the park people, because this, this park is very well maintained. Mm-hmm. But then, the, but then I, wa- I go further through the park. You know, I walk around the outside of the park mm-hmm. and all the areas. And there's a footpath and bike trail that goes around the outside of the park just across from the Assiniboine Forest. And so I start looking around for like these simple tree leans and whatever. And I've actually come across like one or two things that look like they could be potentially tree leans because there are not a lot of trees there. Like it's a pretty sparse trees. And then you see this other big branch that looks like its own tree that's leaning right against it. And I've actually pulled up the base of the tree to see if it was a, a trunk or anything there and it's just stuck in the dirt. Um, so I don't know if somebody else who had seen these videos of, you know, people making Bigfoot structures and just did this as a prank or whatever. 
Yeah. Because, um, yeah, like um, we're, so it's surrounded by farmland beyond there and ta- other, you know, resi- it's a residential area. So it's just kind of a quirky and odd thing for, yeah. you know, like maybe Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts have done this. Other uh, I don't think it's that quirky or, uh, you know, um, yeah. there is one, it wasn't a very it was pretty detailed and too detailed, but it was pretty de- It was, it was detailed enough, but I have one person that had uh, a lady that had sent in about um, something near, it just kind of on the outskirts of like a cul-de-sac area that kind of just melts right into this big, huge, um, uh, I get just kind of like track homes or something like that, you know, some nice decent mm-hmm. area out there. And, uh, in Southern Washington and uh, she actually saw the thing walking and there's a trail, I guess a running trail or something that goes, or, you know, with this Creek for a little bit and then goes kind of like basically all around this whole neighborhood. But mm-hmm. in back of that, it's just, it, there's a couple, you know, a few farms here and there, but for the most part, it's just wooded and hilly. And mm-hmm. uh, she said she's actually seen that thing walk on the other side of their fence. So, yeah, this is right next to a, this is right next to a river too, the Assiniboine River, and yeah. we do have creeks and rivers running throughout the city. Yeah. So if anything wanted to, you know, like traverse or make like a highway, it wouldn't have to go on the road. If anything, you know, moved around. No, um, you just follow so the waterways. Yeah. Follow the waterways. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I don't know what that could be but it's kind of mildly interesting i haven't been i haven't been in the the cinnabon forest across the way there like there's footpaths Mm -hmm. through there too but you know just um um you know travel with a buddy i don't have a travel buddy to go through there (laughs) yeah don't be wandering alone in there yeah yeah Yeah. not at all get a friend go in that's fine that's awesome stay always stay safe that's that's the best thing to do right off the bat but that is awesome thank you so much for sharing that you know like i said before and i don't care how you know uh, you know about the you know the whole experience or anything that we just kind of like to learn here and and take in a lot and everything else whether it's a real simple and brief experience or something that was you know lasted hours or days or minutes or whatever um like to just kind of dive in here and let everybody come in and and uh this way you know whether you're you know some of you guys out here might be researchers or whatever or you know just Mm -hmm. kind of like uh, an enthusiast like myself i want to learn you know, you can kind of pick up things here and there from different people and interviews and everything uh, on, on, on online and everything else. So mm-hmm. for me, it's like, you know, um, you know, tree structures and stuff like that near a housing development of some kind, you know, where it's, you hear that quite often. I've, I've heard it in that, that Finding Bigfoot show. Or I've heard it kind of all over where we're encroaching on, you know, forest land. And mm-hmm. they're wondering why <laughs> these things might be coming up into our backyards. But, you know, the further we spread out, uh, I think the more interaction we're going to end up having. So Prob- I, would, yeah. I wouldn't doubt that. Um, I could send you these pictures to your Facebook page if you like. That pictures. would be great. And then I will post yeah. them up with uh, this uh, interview. I'll go ahead and put that up there uh, right above them. Right. So that would be okay, awesome. Great. Thank I'll- you. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can, uh, if some of them are sharp enough. I might actually go just out there and take some more today. Okay. No, no, that would be great. That would be awesome. Send them on in. But hold on one minute, Rachel. And uh, uh, while I say goodbye to everybody else and say thank you guys very much for being uh, here on PacWest Bigfoot with the interviews and everything else. And thank you guys so very much for all your awesome comments on the YouTube channel and everything else. Don't forget, got uh, got an art print and a free coffee mug giveaway for next month from Sarah Bergman. So I wanted to get that out to you guys next month. So don't be afraid to get to PacWest Bigfoot dot com and sign up for the free giveaways and with that thank you guys very much and rachel hold on one second there